This video was made possible by the Corporation for YouTube Broadcasting and from monthly Patreon support by viewers like you. Thank you. Need some help? Nope. Are you sure? Yep. I'm literally a crane truck, I could help you. Oh, I'm fine. Are you sure? No means no! Why hello YouTube! Greetings from the Lazy Eyebrow Reviewer to review of not just one, but two of the new Earthrise Wave 1 figures. This is the animated video review for Earthrise Hoist and Grapple. These two are characters we haven't seen new toys for since 2013 with Thrilling 30, and 10 years with the Hunt for the Decepticons line, which makes me rather happy since these two are characters I sort of have a soft spot for with my affinity for machinery and whatnot. So it's nice to see these guys first, rather than Trailbreaker and Inferno, who we've got versions for before in the Combiner Wars trilogy, albeit repaints of better figures. So let's dig into this engineering duo. So Grapple and Earthrise is a Voyager class crane truck, loosely based on his old Mitsubishi Fuso line from way back in the day. And similarly, Hoist is very loosely based on the mid-1980s Toyota Hilux like his G1 counterpart, something that we'll see a lot of in Earthrise. It's G1 figures, exactly the way we'd hope for from the mainline generations line. They're about as close of a representation as we can get to the G1 days of old in terms of updated toys, but without crossing way too far into copyright vehicular territory. And I, for one, am absolutely loving every figure they've shown off so far. But let's be real here. This is me we're talking about, and you know exactly what I'm about to nitpick. Scale. Yes, indeed, these two are nowhere near in proper scale in vehicle mode. This isn't necessarily the fault of Hoist, mind you. This is absolutely on Grapple here. Though, to be honest, this is nothing new. Grapple and Inferno have always been undersized Fusos. Look at G1, look at Masterpiece, and look at Earthrise. And Grapple and Inferno are always super tiny for some reason. I don't entirely understand why. In the proper size, they could be absolute Goliaths in their bot mode. But, oh well, it is what it is. And this is how it's always been. Except for one exception. That being Generations Hoist and Solar Storm Grapel. As far as I know, that's been the only time that scale has actually somehow worked with Grapple, and hey, I'll take it. Back to these two. Proper scaling would put them about here. That aside, both of these vehicles are absolutely faithful renditions of the G1. I know I've said that, but it's never been this close before. Especially in the Generations line, where the focus has always been homages, but never quite perfect replicas. And I just can't get over how close this is. I said Mini MP10 for the Siege Prime review, and this is basically Mini MP35 and MP56. And this is just the vehicle mode. Like, Grapple is a long orange crane truck that's super familiar. Crane in the back, cab in the front, dual rear axle setup with all the G1 detail that we can feast our eyes on. I know some people give me flack for being so stuck in the past and why can't I just move on and accept new toys and stop wanting to be like the 80s, but like, have you seen these toys? I want to know how anyone can look at these and think, oh, this is a new concept, clearly not intended to be an updated 80s thing. That being said, this isn't perfect. It is a Uniclass Rations figure, after all, which means there's a few spots where it's looking kind of bare. The back, specifically. Clearly, there's an area molded out for the halites, but nothing's been done to it. So a bit of red, and that fixes the issue. While we're at it, why not touch a chrome? Not just to the bumper, but let's just pick out some mirrors, the air horns, and the wiper blades. There we go! Now we're road legal! Vehicle articulation features a ratcheting crane with a ton of stop points, and somehow offers a wider range of movement than even the Masterpiece figure. Figure that nonsense out. It can go all the way back, all the way around, and extend to twice its length. Honestly, it puts MP35 to shame, and that's something for a figure that's like a quarter of the price. The hook also has a 5mm port on the end of it, so just swinging it up will give you access to it. This is supposed to be for his claw attachment, which, because 5mm port system, that means it can rotate. Can't pick up anything, but it's really cool that it was included. That aside, anything will fit in here, really. Why not add a loudspeaker and crank up the jam? Add a water nozzle attachment and go firefighting. Work part-time as the local camera car. Operate the overcompensator. Dangle corpses above the ground. 
pick up vehicles and dump them in the compactor, or even add a hand to wave hello to the neighbors. Anything is possible with a 5mm port system. Hoist, on the other hand, is the rugged, jacked-up Toyota truck we've all known him for. And this is such an upgrade compared to that lame Generations figure. Which, yeah, I get it was based on the comics, but I mean, come on, this is clearly an upgrade. This guy is properly sized and looking right boxy. One thing that's popping up on camera that doesn't actually look this terrible in person is the two-tone green that's going on here. Both the hood and the cab are made of translucent plastic. Meanwhile, the doors and the box of the truck are molded in this slightly bluish green. The lighting and the camera are making it really obvious, and it's something I wish was just a matter of the whole figure being painted the same green, but I, I get cost things, and in the end, I can live with it. Until then, though, let's give Hoist the same treatment. First, we're going to chrome the rear hubcaps, get them to match the front wheels, and then we're going to pick out the door handles and mirrors. The taillights are painted in amber for some reason, and only amber, so we'll add a chrome strip for the reverse lights and red for the taillights in high look style. And on the front, we're going to change quite a bit. Chrome headlights black out the grill, amber side turn indicators, and the fog lights are actually supposed to be turn indicators on the Hilux, so they get to be orange as well. Now on the back, we find the old G1 style tow truck package that Hoist is known for. I've always been not too fond of this, as I never entirely sure what the diaclone was going for here. <sighs> oh well, it's what we got, so let's just explore it. His arm cannon can attach to the side. If I don't mention it, someone's going to have a field day in the comments, so there you go. It's been mentioned. Otherwise, the wings from robot motor are on top, and they can rotate around. I get what I'm about to say ups the part count, and that by doing so would increase the price. So take this as wishful thinking. I wish that these wings here were in two parts, like one of those Lego hinges, so that they could fold up and then rotate around and clip together to become sort of light bar for the tow truck. I feel like that would make way more sense design-wise. And the other thing I would love, if we unfold the towing harness, is for this actually to become a towing harness. As is, it just unfolds, slides under a car, and then drives away. Hook into, or otherwise attach the vehicles to it. I would love some sort of attachment so that you could just at least plunk the wheels and raise it up so that a hoist can actually tow. Again, like I said, this is all wishful thinking, but still wishful nonetheless. What the towing apparatus does do, however, is connect these using the same base building modes that we've seen in the other toys to come out in the last year. Hello there all you motorsport fans and welcome to the 12th annual motorsport games. Our next event is the tractor pull and I believe our next contestant Hoist is up. Hoist is trying to break the current record which is set at 26 tons and if possible he aims to shatter that as he's been asked to hook up to a load of 4.4 million tons. I'll believe it when I see it. So let's go to the field with our resident commentator Perceptor. Thank you Lionhide. Hoist is all hooked up to his load today and he says he's ready to go. Hoist in his base configuration only produces 150 horsepower, though he says he's made some major modifications to his powertrain to make this all possible. And there's the green light, off he goes! Unbelievable! Hoist has pulled Omega Supreme a distance of 78 feet! We'll be back after the break with the results of the judges and they've now requested a steroid test. Fun fact, the gun can also double as a pylon. So that's been vehicle mode. They're great modes. Yeah, I'm a little less than thrilled with the size of grapple, but I can't argue that both of these vehicles look utterly fantastic. For size comparison, Wind Charger and Wind Charger. Mech Fans Toys Huffer and Bumblebee. Blue Streak and Prowl. Smokescreen and Jazz, Optimus and Ratchet, Inferno and Ultra Magnus, and finally, MP Herbie. He's a work in progress. It's kind of funny if you think of it. Over the years, two size scales have been emerging out of the Generations line. You've got these figures, which all of which kind of more or less work together. Obviously not perfect, but still pretty good. And then you have this line, which again, not perfect, but still looking pretty good together. Yes, I go on about this every review, but it's something I value, and I'm sorry that those who don't find scale that interesting kind of find this annoying. I apologize to you guys, but again, this is something that I find important. Alrighty then, on to transformation. Hey, now, w what are you doing? You said transform. Yeah, but we're supposed to show off how it's done. Yeah, but you said transform, and so I did. Okay, but 
we have to do it step by step. That's the whole point of... How long do you expect us to be here for this? I don't have all day. Look, man, none of the other figures had an issue doing this, so I don't see why... Well, the hell come Ricochet got off so easy? If you need me, I'll be in my trail. This is ridiculous. All right, then. I guess we're taking a quick commercial break while we figure out some contracting issues. Stay tuned. The Transformers will return after these messages. We now return to the Transformers. Okay, on to transformation for real this time. On hoist, start by untabbing everything from the back. Fold up the hood, open up the side panels, swing the waist down, swing open the legs, fold down the hood, put the wings aside, open the toying attachment, and fold out the extra lights. Fold up the head, and swing down the toying attachment until it pegs into the back. Rotate down the arm panels, straighten out the arms, and you're done. On hoist, put the hook away and retract the crane. Separate the crane base from the chassis, fold the cab forward, take the rear wheels and fold them into the feet, separate the arms and swing them around until they peg into the cab, fold up the hands, rotate the forearms and rotate the whole arm down, rotate the crane backwards, then fold the whole thing down. Rotate around the bucket that contains the head. Collapse the triple hinge joint that connects the crane to the cab, and lastly, tab it into the roof of the cab. So here we have the final result, and oh my goodness! Like, the vehicles are just incredible, but these designs! MP35 and 56 indeed! The size of these two figures is exactly where it should be. The design of both these figures just absolutely nails where these two figures should be! Going back to MP35 with its oversimplification in design, then coming back to Earthrise Grapple, this! This is exactly what I wanted from the masterpiece. Look at all this detail. All of this just looks so dang stellar. I, I can't even begin to fully express how much I enjoy these two. They look like partners from the same line. Because they are. Like, they could help each other build whatever nonsense is going on in their heads. They could help Ratchet with whatever project he's got going on. I just cannot overstate enough how much I love these two. You really can't get one without tracking down the other. They just they just go together. If, however, you can afford both, let's take a look at them individually. Hoist. Hoist is looking just a little as bit tubby. Man, if I had a nickel every time someone said that about me. I love that the hinge in the windshield has made the protruding flat belly we've all come to love with the Autobot belly button logo proudly displayed. And you still get the windshield, the tire love handles, with everything about this guy screaming, look at me, I'm G1. That's what you wanted, right? He gets a blaster that slots into his hand and covers the whole hand. I, I kind of dig it. Like, it works. Just the only thing I have wrong with it is that he has to use it. And here we come to our first nitpick. Hoist looks great. If you have him in these static poses, then everything is incredible. Just downright amazing. However, in the slavishness of G1, the side panels are one piece that are also the connecting bits of his arms to his chest. Articulation is there and all, but... Try and pose it and it all looks a little weird. But I thought you liked G1, I hear some of you already saying. I, I do. I didn't grow up with it and was only introduced to it like seven years ago. But yeah, I really do like G1. And I really appreciate the lengths they went to homage the original design. But man, if it doesn't get in the way half the time. Trailbreaker was just announced, and Trailbreaker's animation design omits these side panels in a robot mode, but the toy didn't, so now we get to deal with them here. Oh joy. The other problem, and it's a minor one, as animation-wise it actually comes in handy sometimes, is hollow legs. But I can live with it, so in my books it's really, really minor. Beyond that, if you can get past all those minor nitpicks, you can get some really decent poses. And the design is just top-notch. I mean, look at this head sculpt. Could you ask for anything more perfect? And those legs! Look at their proportions! Kneeling is no issue because somebody had the sense to make the thighs and the shins the same length. Do you know how much that irritates me as an animator? Like, I go to do something with a figure, and I find out the shins are five times longer than the thighs, and then I'm like, well, this is no good. What the heck am I supposed to do with this? Mad appreciation to the designers for this, and the double hinge. Like, with this kneel, you can easily make Hoist get down on one knee and propose to Chromia, only for Ironhide to see it in an exact revenge. Grapple. As I stated earlier, Grapple is everything I wanted in MP35 but never got. Look at all the detail in the legs. The design elements are exactly what you'd expect from a masterpiece grapple in terms of proportion. Just everything about this figure is extremely amazing, and I can't get enough. The head skull features the rabbit ear design that Inferno sometimes borrows in the animation. The chest is everything you remember from the G1 toy and then some. 
I love that not one single part, and this goes for hoist as well, is fake. Every single element we see in robot mode is used in vehicle mode in its intended purpose, which is something that not even most of the Masterpiece line can say nowadays. More so now than five years ago. Even the back is what I want over MP35. I love that the crane arm is back here. I love how compact and out of the way it is. Like, credit where credit is due. MP35's engineering of the crane arm to fold and tuck and pretzel itself into the chest cavity and then be completely hidden did take some incredible, out-of-the-box thinking. But here it is, plain as day on the Earthrise release, and I'm not hearing anybody complain that it's even visible, and I, for one, am fully happy that it is. By no means is the crane cumbersome, or does it ever get in the way, and from any other angle, you barely see it. Contrast that with the Infernal Ray paint from Combiner Wars, and we can see exactly how one could mess it up, and be in the way. Obviously, Inferno is like this because Hotspot is like this, and both of them use this as their combiner method, but man, the way Grapple handles this makes me super excited for the inevitable Earthrise Inferno. We all know what's happening, come on. Not that there's anything really wrong with this one. Like, it is a good stand-in for a while. And it lets us see a different take on the character, even if it is a hot spot in cosplay. But like I was saying with the crane arm, I like that it's this way because that just means that in the robot mode, we have full access to it. For instance, a little-known fact about Grapple is his amazing musical abilities. Or how about pestering his engineer partner? What? What? Did you tap me? I'm all the way over here. How could I have done that? Alright, whatever, man. <laughs> well, now that's funny. I could have sworn you were all the way over there just a second ago. A solitary creature, the Cybertronian Durapple, wanders along a lone plane in search of Energon. He stops as he senses something not quite right. Nearby, a predator has awakened, and the chase begins. Now, Grapple comes with not just one, but two accessories. One of which is a rifle. And what can I say? It's accurate to the source, blah, 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 blah. Guns don't interest me. However, the other accessory does. This is the claw attachment, compatible with the 5mm port systems. And it can work in a wide range of scenarios. A stranger from the outside. I'm James Lightyear. Who's in charge here? Finally, I have my very own blaster. Now I can join the rest of the Autobots in defending against the cons. I'm one step closer to becoming the next Prime and hey! Nope. Come on, Give B. It Reach for That's it. Mine. You can do it, man. This you just gotta fair, jump for guys. it. You got it, little guy. Just give me How about a coat rack? Where unsuspecting Autobots hang their overcoats after a long day at work, when all of a sudden the coat rack gets up and collects the day's spoils. I mean, he just scored a free hat. Can Soundwave stupid lamppost alt mode get in that? I didn't think so. So let's talk about articulation. Grapple's head, because the base that it is isn't a fake part, spins on a post inside the base. Honestly, I'm okay with this. It's not ideal as he's got to turn his whole body to look left or right, but it's not so bad. Just kind of means that he can't really see anything if he can't move his body. So let me get this right. And feel free to correct me if at any time I get something even slightly wrong. I told you to not to build an energy source the Decepticons would want. So you hired the Decepticons to build it behind my back. Is this correct? Yes, Optimus. Optimus. Hoist, you can go start cleaning. And you! I want you to stand in the corner for 15 minutes and think about what you did. Then you can go help Hoist with the cleanup process. Yes, sir. So yeah, Grapple has to move left or right if he wants to look left or right. And if that's the trade-off for having a Voyager version, eh, that's nothing compared to the other benefits. For the rest of our articulation, it's nothing overly special. The arms move about how you'd expect, though the elbow only goes 90, which is kind of lame. But if nothing else, he can always be tipped over and poured out. What's really special is below the waist. First off, you get the waist rotation, then the thighs, hips, knees, everything moves in a wide variety of directions. And best of all, the ankle. It's what I believe is called a butterfly joint, with its wide range of movements just right here, which accounts for forward, backward, rolling movement. It's amazing. It allows for this super dynamic posing and about the easiest walk cycle you ever did see. I haven't had to bust out the extra rigging at all this week, and I'm floored by how easy this thing animates. 
Unfortunately, the knees are super stiff, making that a bit of a chore to move. But hey, I'll take super stiff over super loose any day. This being Earthrise, they also get mold points on their bodies where blast effects can be placed. So if Megatron sneaks up on them, they'll be caught totally unaware. Kind of on the fence about this gimmick. It's fairly unintrusive, I guess, but I see it, it's unsymmetrical, and the perfectionist part of me can't unsee it. But it does have its benefits animation-wise. The ports themselves aside, I will admit I'm more than happy to have these effect parts from Omega and Jetfire. They just add that extra something to the animation. For size comparison, Megatron and Optimus, Red Alert and Smokescreen, Unique Toys Sound Mixer and Perceptor, Sea Spray and Beachcomber, Jetfire and Jetfire, and lastly Omega Supreme. On the Decepticon side of things, Megatron and Starscream, Soundwave, Frumble, Laserbeak, and Nightbird, Mechfans Toys Reflector and the Insecticons, and lastly, undersized KO Devastator. And while I liked the size of the final product of Devastator when compared to the other combiners, man, they do not size up well in their individual bot modes, and I'm really starting to see how underscaled all of the combiners were. Oh well, something else to upgrade for one day, but not today. Anyway, that's been my review of the Earthrise Grapple and Hoist. These are the first two figures of the Earthrise foray that I've picked up, not including Astro Train, as that box had Siege on it, and I'm counting that as Siege. These two figures are absolutely, positively, wonderfully incredible. I don't think I've stated that enough, nor will I continue to state that enough. I can't express just how much fun I've had messing about with them this week, especially with Grapple. This entire time filming, I'd get near the end and find some other stupid little animation I feel like filming, and it's just, it's just been fun. Just pure, straight animation fun. And I certainly hope that's come across in this review. These figures are fun. They're extremely versatile, very flexible, well-balanced, hold their poses, and not once that I feel like throwing either of them into the sun for not cooperating on the animation desk. And not even just that, they look great too. They complement your G1 cast so well. Their heights work. The aesthetic is just, oh, so G1 in just every single correct way. Basically, in short, I can't recommend these two enough. If you can only afford one, spend the extra 10 bucks and get Grapple. That's the figure I had the most fun with. But both of them are just amazing, and I can't recommend both of them enough. This has been the Lazy Eyebrow Reviewer.